So this is me prepping as I'm sitting here by myself waiting for Deanna Williams to call. And I have to tell you, I, I'm i a little nervous and not because of insecurities or anything like that, but mostly because I have admired and respected this woman for as long as I can remember. And so to actually get the opportunity to speak to her. Ah! So I'm counting down the seconds or minutes if she's late. <laughs> but yeah, I have, a lot, I have a lot of questions that I want to ask her. I know I'm not going to be able to get to all of them just because she's busy, you know, and, and, when you have an amazing career such as she does, you don't always have the luxury to sit around. And there she is. Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. Let's see if I can answer. Hi. See you. You know, ooh, can you see me? I can see you. Jazz. Ooh, child. So happy to see you. Oh, the way my heart is jumping. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Girl, I'm on my Look phone. Me. Trying to get me. Listen, I, I, I can't even, I'm gonna tell you when we're not recording, but I'm trying to get on my laptop. I didn't want to be late. I was like, no, no, first no, of all, girl, so you fine, baby. You fine. All right, let me try to get on my computer okay because i'm on my phone and that's not gonna this thing brings so much so let's let's see if i can find the link okay and how are you i'm good listen i love you i listen to you every day like a fan a fan oh. you are no, jasmine i'll say this when we are recording but you are literally one of my favorite broadcasters. Don't say, are you serious? That's almost going to make me cry and I am not a crier. Oh my God. Well, I am, I, I am a crier. <laughs> I'm about to cry, girl. Did we get it? Are we here? We're here. Finally, <laughs> praise God. God is good. <laughs> Oh my God, Deanna Williams. Jasmine, I love you so much. Do you, I want to tell you that you are my high octane premium gas that I put into my tank daily. Well, except for when you're not on the air. Oh my Just gosh. the sound of your voice, the authority, the information and inspiration that you dispense on the regular, and your toe-to-toe -to -toe with a brilliant brother like D.L. Hughley. <laughs> I love the banter. I love the exchange as a fellow broadcaster who's in the Library of Congress with you. Inaugural 30, baby. Media. You just lift me. You do. And I've heard oh, the best man. of the best. I just, 51 years, radio, 51. First of all. And you are without a doubt one of my favorite broadcasters. I just have to go on the record and say that. And I know the people who are listening to us feel the same. Oh, my God. First of all, I cannot tell you what that means to me. And being a fellow broadcaster you know that a lot of times it, it's a thankless position. Um, I tell people all the time, when I first started, you were in a room by yourself and you're your, own, you're your only cheerleader. It's you and a box, a microphone, and some records. And ain't nobody cheering you on. It's you and you got to keep that energy popping. And so to be able to hear it from an icon, a legend, somebody who done it is still doing it and you and i know 50 plus years first of all rarely happens that's a rarity in itself but i think 
One of the reasons why I even wanted to do Woman to Woman is because I feel like we are all so connected, but at times we're so far away. And we really need to hear from each other to say, I see you, I hear you, and I know it may not always feel like it, but you kicking ass. <laughs> yeah. And you are kicking ass, Miss Jasmine. That uh, for so sure. I received that. And I, I got to tell you something. First of all, you need no introduction. Everybody knows who you are. I knew who you were long before you knew me. And your story, your, your journey, your path to where you are now is nothing less than amazing, astounding, just so many adjectives I could use. But when I first laid eyes on you face to face, you were everything I thought you would be. And you don't get to say that often in this business, but you were, from me watching you um, on TV, doing documentaries, doing, you know, all of the behind the scenes type things and giving us the stories and giving us the history, which I don't know anybody who knows the history the way that you do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, hence yeah. the mother of Black Music Month and, and Black Music period as far as I'm concerned. But you never allowed that to um, dim your light in terms of humility. You're one of the most humble people I've ever met, but you radiate with such energy that when you walk into the room, it infiltrates you whether you want it to or not. And it's, such a, it's such a powerful gift to have because not everyone has it and you got it. Ah. I received that, Jasmine. Thank you. But I want to I know do where know it that from. it's one of the gifts. It, it, God, it's a gift. Gonna, it's it's one of the gifts God gave me. God gave me a passion for our culture, for our people. But I I know what you're talking about regarding the light because I feel the light, mm -hmm. and I also know when my light is dimming. I, I'm in a period right now where I'm I'm, you know, my closest friends have told me. One of my good friends called me yesterday and said, I need you to go on vacation. Oh. And then I heard that this morning from one of my best friends who's known me since I was 19. She said, I need you to take a break. Mm. And I was like, okay. And then, I mean, multiple people who are close to me said the same thing because they know what I've been dealing with. My mother has Alzheimer's. She's 90. I am her caretaker. I am her only child. Um, mm. My daughter just had a heart event recently. Several of my dear close friends are having health crisis. And you know a few of them. They're like, one is in stage four, metastasized mm. cancer. Another one had a four hour surgery the other day. Another one is so weak, she couldn't even eat. I mean, girl, when we talk in woman to woman, and I'm uh, a person who takes on, I take it on, I take it on, I take it on, and then it lives right here in my chest, yeah. right here. I can that, feel the stuff, but that, I love and I care deeply. And I think that's and so that. important, but that is that for me is another reason why having woman to woman conversations are not only important, but they are necessary. Because I think, you know, I have this thing where it is, you know, superwoman versus super myth. And that is, you know, when you look at people like yourself, you know, you've worked, you've mm -hmm. grinded, you, you know, your whole life to fight for everything. Mm -hmm. We fight for our jobs, we fight for our homes, we fight for our children, our families. You know, we, we fight for equality, we fight for equal pay, we fight for uh, human rights, period, as women. And I think sometimes we, we forget to fight for us. And, and when you hear people who are close to you saying, take a break, it can be difficult to hear because you always want to be the person who's always there. But, but how, how do we battle that? And how do we balance superwoman and super myth? Because we're human like everybody else. Okay, so the first thing we do to answer your question is we take off our superwoman cape. I have, I have them in different colors. Because okay. <laughs> your fashion is on point. <laughs> <laughs> but girl, they need to go to the dry cleaners, okay? Mm. It's time. 
and to my friends who gave me this counsel in the last 24 hours, I am going to heed it. Uh, because when people close to you, they can see you better than you can yourself. And if people are telling you, you need to stop, then that's what I'm fixing to do. I'm, I'm fixing to do exactly what they've encouraged me to do. But we have to, you know, as women, we just wear all these hats. And like you said, Jasmine, we're underpaid. We're not always regarded. And, and even people like you and me, so, and I say me and you because we're public facing individuals. We're on TV, we're on mm. the radio, we're in podcasts, we're on stages, hosting events, lifting other people, despite whatever we have. And you know, Jasmine, I'm one of those people who is like, the show must go on. Even mm -hmm. if calamity and things are falling apart all around you, I'm one of the people that says, break down, fall apart, after you've done your job. I've always been that girl, always. Yeah, yeah. Times have been on the air where you've been despondent, depressed, uh, decimated, <laughs> uh, uh, decreased, you name it, but you have gotten on, done your job, and no one else was the wiser. I've done it so many times in my 51 plus year broadcast career. It's a hard and thing. It's a hard thing, but part of our job, we're clarion voices in our community. What a gift and an honor that God has given us to be on the mic, to be on the camera, and to be disseminating information that prayerfully is gonna make a qualitative difference in the lives of even if you reach one person. So when I tell you, I can't wait till you come on the radio with D.L. Hughley. I hear him. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening for you. I want to hear you. And I'm smiling. I'm driving. I'm stopped at a light. And I'm like, yes, Jasmine. I appreciate yes, that. You have such a broad, big audience is such an important perspective and voice that we are blessed to have you. And I mean that. I, I, I receive you it. No, know I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a no, you not. You no, you not. not a That's one thing person. I know about you. You not. You ain't on. You ain't gonna blow yes. no smoke. You ain't on none of that. Yeah. I know you tell it like it is. But when yes. you talk about the show must go on, uh huh. You know, a part of woman to woman too is because you know, obviously, you know, we could sit and and I could celebrate all of your accomplishments. It would take me a whole week or two to get through every single thing that you've done and the major impact that you've had on our community and, and other communities alike. But what I really want to know is, is more about Deanna and more mm -hmm. about when, cause, cause I think that's part of the issue is we're so focused on everything that is outward that right. sometimes no one, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I listen, I'll just be fully transparent. I get in my feelings. I'm like, you know, nobody ever asked me how I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I got to go to work and make everybody laugh for four hours and, you know, try to get this dude right here straight when he don't have his information right and this, that, and the other. And then I come home and it's just me, <laughs> me and my dogs and some hot Cheetos and a glass of wine and ain't nobody calling to say, girl, how you doing? How was it? Do you ever feel like that? And what is it that you see when you look in the mirror and you don't have the cape on and there is no makeup and the hair is in a bun and you got your oversized PJs on. And, and, and what what is it that you see when you look in the mirror and how does that make you feel? Well, it depends on what's going on. But when I look in the mirror, more often than not, I'm pleased. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm 70 now. Uh, I've, I've lived a very full life. I'm 70, girl. I got you, grown. Baby, you... And I'm a Nana. Yeah, I'm, I'm 70. I will be God willing 71. And so what I look at because, you know, as we age and especially as, as women, we're looking for like the other day, I will tell you, I looked in the mirror the other day, this line right here, this is a new line. <laughs> this is a new line. Right There's one here. <laughs> and these bags, I don't have any makeup on. I have on lipstick and a little uh, eyeliner that I put on for you because I didn't want you to see. <laughs> I, I was crying this morning. Uh, I was uh. crying this morning. And so I see a beautiful woman yeah. that wants the best for everyone. And you know what? My, my humanity is showing up in a way that it previously has not. I am a race woman. I'm a very proud 
Afro-Latina woman. I grew up in Harlem in the Bronx. Um, I've been in Philly, which is where I am now, mm -hmm. longer than New York. I lived in New Orleans. I had a second home in New Orleans for 20 years. I am a culture woman. I love our music, which is why it's very easy for me to be on Unsung since 2008, mm -hmm. telling mm -hmm. stories of people that I wasn't just a fan of, in many cases, people that I worked with, people that are friends, people that my, my ex is Kenny Gamble, one of the architects of the Sound of Philadelphia, and he produced Phyllis Hyman, yes. Patti LaBelle, yeah. Jean Carn, The Three Degrees, um, Shirley Jones and the Jones Girls, all of these people, still my friends, the ones that are living, uh, I'm still close. They were signed to the record company, but family nonetheless. Uh, today is Teddy Pendergrass's birthday. Oh. He was my best male friend and my borrow a cup of sugar neighbor for many, many years. In fact, the way I found that house that I still own was I would go visit Teddy faithfully every weekend when I got off the air and uh, I would drive around his neighborhood and then I saw this for sale sign and I bought that house. <laughs> and I told him, I said, better to keep a good eye on you, bro, even though you are quadriplegic in a wheelchair, still close enough for me to come over and borrow that cup of sugar when I need it. So yeah, That's when I look, in the, I, look, I look in the mirror with satisfaction because I have lived and I am living a magnificent God-touched mm -hmm. life. I'm, a, I'm, I'm very clear that the life force that I have in me comes from something way beyond my comprehension. But I know enough as I look around, when I see the birds in the sky, I'm a certified scuba diver. When I've gone down and seen those fish and the different colors that you don't see up here, when I, when I see the splendor of life, even with things that are wrong, Jasmine, I give gratitude to God and I'm grateful that I'm alive and that I'm grateful that I have an opportunity to spread joy wherever I can. And that's what I wish to do until I have no breath in me is to amazing. celebrate yeah. us. And, and like I said, my humanity, I'm even feeling a little less anger towards white people who have done us wrong historically. That's a and hard guess one. what? Mm -hmm. I've done my genealogy. I saw a picture not long ago of one of my relatives on the Irish side. And I would venture to say he was probably a slave owner. Mm -hmm. And that my great, 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 all the way back, grandmother didn't have a choice. But I saw his picture and, and, and I said that to him. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. But as of late, I'm just toning down my anger and rage about enslavement and ill treatment of black people and brown people for so long. For so and it's long. still going on and it's still going on. So I often find myself, you know, raging a little. But lately, I've also noticed that I've toned it down and I'm being a little more loving as a human being. I'm a Puerto Rican black woman. <laughs> that means you can bring the heat. With me. I can bring the heat, you can bring and I can make heat. it real cool too. I almost feel like breaking into a Nikki Giovanni poem. Yeah, oh, then ego, that's ego, tripping. ego, ego tripping. tripping. Ego tripping. Yes, ego indeed. Ego tripping. Okay. You know, do you, I always believe that as we get older, we're still just, you know, bigger versions of our childlike self. So when you look in the mirror, do you see any um, of mm. the childlike? self of you that remains and what and what you're, is that you're looking at her right now yeah i'm a little girl i am playful mm -hmm. i have dolls i play with my dolls i ride merry-go-rounds all over the world i embrace the her name is Dee. Dee. i embrace Dee, Dee every single day and i really believe that part of what my family and friends love about me is the fact that I'm still that little girl. That little girl. Yes, I'm a grown woman. Yes, I'm a grandmother of two. Yes, all of that. But I am still a little girl and I will never let that go. And, and you, you should... know what, later today, I'm going to the park and I'm gonna ride the carousel. Oh, because I when I'm gonna tap into that little girl, that's one of my special places. I will go ride that carousel and I will be, delighted in the moment of bliss and joy of doing something that I have done since I was a little girl that brings me 
special feelings and energy of joy. I think that's so important. And I think one of the things that we specifically as women, certainly black women, we feel as though when we get to a certain age that we should comport ourselves in this or that way and we should be this, that and the other. But I believe wholeheartedly that what helps you maintain your youth as you get older is the youthful vitality that you had when you were a child. Let me tell you something. I watch cartoons every day, faithfully. Let me find out a new cartoon is at the movie. I am right there, popcorn in hand. Yes, I got some food <laughs> that I'm not supposed to in my purse, but we're not going to talk about that. I will go, and I'm not mad that I might be the only grown up in there with no kids. But what I tell people is being able to tap into whenever I want to, because that's how close I've kept Red. That was my nickname when I was a little girl. I've kept her near and dear to me so close. I don't have to really tap hard to tap into her when I need it. And Lord knows with the way that the world is, with everything going crazy and topsy-turvy and, you know, the ills of social media, but the good parts of social, it's just so much as life is lifing. I can tap into her. I can go watch cartoons. I don't ride merry-go-rounds, but I'll get on a swing in a minute. <laughs> I do all of the things that I used to as a kid. And I think some of us have lost contact with the child inside of us when really you learn your greatest lessons as a child. And then you just figure out how do I now use that in application of everyday life? Right. Don't you think that? And what what would you say is one yeah. of the lessons that you learned as a kid that you still carry to this day outside of the merry-go-round? Joie de vivre, which was Joie. given to me by my parents. Joie de vivre, the joy of living. The joy of living. I had it as a little girl. I'm an only child, but I was poured into so much by my parents. They taught, they gave me the love of reading. I'm a big, I'm a voracious reader. Magazines. I was on a plane one time, didn't have a book or a magazine. I reread the emergency. <laughs> <laughs> The emergency card over and over oh, again God. because I just, I had to read. I love to read. So, but yeah, the, the joy of living resides in me, even though we have so much calamity going on yeah. in our world. Yeah. I feel that I'm an ambassador, as are you, of goodwill. We're goodwill ambassadors spreading positive energy. And even when you're delivering bad information, Jasmine, even the way you deliver it, I'm like, I can still receive it. It's more palatable to me. Okay. <laughs> you know, when I hear Gail King just talking about devastation oh. in Haiti or this and that, I can still receive it because I know it's coming from a person that has light. They have yes. light. I watch King Charles now. I love Charles Barkley and, um, and Gail, Gail King yes. on CNN every Wednesday night. Um, you know, so, and I, and I now pour into myself still information about people who are doing grand things to make yes. a difference, to make our world a better place. Real, real, real talk. Real, and, real know, talk. I think it's important right now, considering, um, you know, I don't want to get too political because Lord knows I could. When yes. you consider where we are um, during this time, watching what the Supreme Court is doing, watching what, you know, a lot of the extremists on a particular side are doing in terms of our rights and how it is going to affect us as women. Um, do you ever con get concerned about what you have worked and spent the better part of your life in terms of making sure that information uh, is passed down correctly when it comes to history, even when you're talking about music and, and not just lyrically and and the harmony that you hear but the story behind it and the difficulties that it that it took to make it um do you ever get concerned that you know perhaps it it might not always be here absolutely jasmine i stay in concern i'm a grandmother now i have two grandsons one is an adopted grandchild he's 15 a teenager and then my biological grandson luke so it's nafis and luke I'm thinking more about them now more than ever. Yeah. Because I'm in fourth quarter. I'm clear. I'm on I'm 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 on my way. You know, I have no idea how much God is affording me time wise, but I'm looking at them because I'm praying that they will have an opportunity to live to 70. My mother's 90. I may live to 90, don't know, but I'm so focused 
on their present and future. Yeah. And the present and future for all of us. Um, you know, the thing is, if you look at history and her story, there have always been wars, pestilence, issues, always. always. Now, the magnification of the social media and internet allows us to see it all over the world. The 24 hour news cycle allows us to be in it. I was watching the news last night. I said, now why am I still glued to the same news that I saw earlier, earlier today? today? Because I wanted to know about the trial. I wanted to be informed. And in my capacity as a media coach, mm -hmm. it is a, it's a paramount that I stay on top of news. But girl, sometimes you got to dial that down. Disconnect. For sure. Disconnect and speaking of and that, hold, hold that thought right mm -hmm. there because my computer, since my uh, assistant ain't here, is about to die. <laughs> so normally she would do this for me, but I'm going to edit this part right here. So hold, hold that thought. Okay. All right. I'm trying to see which pair of shoes, the ones with the kiss on them, all of them. A girl, I couldn't, let me tell you something. You know all I could do, but I'm telling you which one I'd like. The one with the kisses, the red yes. pumps with the kisses. But let me tell you, all I could do with those, Jasmine, is-, is look at them. No, mm -mm. I'm gonna put them, what size do you wear? Eight and a half. I can squeeze into an eight and a half. I'm an eight, I'm an 8.5 to nine, a 39. But I would put those red shoes on with my red, this beautiful red bra that I bought in France and just cross my legs and, and not say, walk. And, and not walk, not walk, <laughs> just sit there, cross my legs and say, baby, look at it. Yes. But you know what? Let me, I'll quickly tell you this about these shoes and we'll get back okay. to what you said. A lot okay. of people always um, say, oh my God, your shoes. Oh my God, your shoes. And some people are like, oh, she's just showing off. And I say, let me tell you something about these shoes. For me, they do not represent, um, you know, any type of vainglorious. It's not even, that's not even vanity. For me, I come in and every one of these shoes represents some place that I've walked. Some have been very hard, very, very hard. And some have been easy on me. And so whenever I'm feeling down, because a lot of these shoes, honey, let me tell you something, post-COVID, my feet won't even get in them. <laughs> and my knees won't let me stand long. However... <laughs> I come in here, and I know it sounds silly, but it's not silly to me. And I look and I say, you know what, God, look at the journey that you have brought me on. And some of these no longer serve me, but I don't ever want to forget the lesson when I wore them. And so that's what I use this wall for, honey. I'm not mad. Now, I these love we it, gonna keep wearing. Look, these right here, we're going to keep wearing. Them right there. Those right, the right floral there. ones. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah look at those, that. girl. I don't think I've ever worn heels that high. Those are really? like six. Let me tell no, you. No, even when I was way younger, I couldn't wear that. Yeah, and I'm I sure could. And I could strut. Are... But now all I can do is strain. So there's well, a difference but, but... between strutting and straining. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to bring to your attention beside those are a row of sneakers. And I've seen you in the sneakers too. So and you know the, okay. it. That's it. And all you know over it. here. Sneakers. That's yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> so let's get back to the point about, about yes. the importance of, of disconnecting. Because yeah. it's hard, right? Because you're just like me. You, you're plugged to it all day long. And, and I said something to someone. Uh, I think it was DL, but somebody else. I said, if I hear that, don't, don't, don't. One more time, because I feel like everything is breaking news. Everything. And so my sense of mm. like, it's just like all the time, it's too much. It's too it much. It's no, here we go. Too mucking fudge. Repeat after me. Too mucking Too fudge. mucking fudge. There you go. I'm going to try to say that on out. the show today, but if I mess it up, I'm going to say, you know who made me do that? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Too mucking fudge. 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 fudge. Yes. So I was a potty mouth at one point in my life, and I was like, oh, Deanna, you got to stop. And it, and, it, and it wasn't no pardon me my French, because those were not French words. They were curse words mm -hmm. in English. And so I started creating my own curse words to substitute. So too mucking fudge. Too mucking fudge. fudge. You should do a book. <laughs> you should do a book. You really should. You should do a book like, that. I'm serious, like a dictionary 
for those who are re- rehabbing. Because <laughs> I, when I was in college, I refused to curse because my grandmother used to say, you know, people only talk like that because they have a limited vocabulary, right? <laughs> now you hear these studies that say, well, you should curse because it, it helps you mentally. But I, I was like, you know, I'm, I, I used to not do it. I got around DL and now I'm just cussing all the time. And I can I can stand outside myself and say, what is wrong with you and your mouth? But if I had this book to rehabilitate myself and my vocabulary, okay, that's what you okay, need so, to work on. Okay, so here's the other one. Fluck. Okay. Fluck. Fluck. Okay. Fluck. That's I like I it. Say fluck. Yeah. Fluck. So I just started, you know, changing up things a little. And uh, and now it's so hilarious because when I'm with friends they'll use some of my curse my curse words yes. and it's so hilarious to hear I think them that's cute yeah it's, not only it's that I, listen I'm, you know, one thing i am is creative no like i have I, I thank god for having such a creative mind so i'm always thinking just in ways that some people may think i'm not saying that i'm the only one but like by now I would have written a book on that. I would have had merchandise, T-shirts, sweatshirts, and everything that say that because people will not only, you know, get a giggle out of it, but I think people would also kind of, you know, kind of create, like lean into it. Like, let me give that a shot. I love that. And you talk about friends. I'm going to be honest with you. I, one of the most disappointing things for me as I got older, I thought I would have more friends. And as I got older, I realized I have less but they are, it doesn't mean that they're not important to me. It's just that I have less friends. So when I see social media and they people are having all of these lavish parties and they got all these people, I'm like, where are my friends? <laughs> like, I have a few. Now, we have fun. We have a lot of fun together. But it's not like I thought it would be, either because I've outgrown friends or either they think I've outgrown me and so they treat me different. Have you experienced that? Most certainly I've experienced it. But remember, I said I'm an only child. Mm. And so I formed familiar bonds very early. And I have people who I call, like Kathy Hughes is my sister. She's my best friend. She called me the other day and she said, did you see what I wrote? Did you see what I wrote? And I was having... (laughs) a massively intense, hectic day that day. I said, darling, no, I haven't been on social media. Do you want to tell me what you said? No, I want you to look at it. I want you to look at it. And then I went back and I looked at it and she was praising me for something, saying something like, I'm so proud you're my BFF. She just gave me all this public love. She gives it to me privately, but she was giving it to me on Instagram, I think it was. And I was like, I'll take it. But I have, so, so she's my sister. I have another girlfriend. Her name is Laval Warren. She's my sister as well. I've made. I, she feels like we came out the same womb mm. with the same mother and the same father, um, and we're that close. And and I tell her everything. She is the keeper of all my it. Okay, <laughs> all, it. of all of it. And so. Uh, I think that what happens is a reason and a season for certain people, Jasmine, in your life. I have people who were close to me early on in life. They're not here now. I have people who have done things that I found objectionable, Mm -hmm. sisters Mm -hmm. and brothers, but men and women. And I'm like, deuces, take Mm -hmm. care. I wish you well, but I wish you away from me because what I need and want, you are not, it is not you. Not you. You know, so when people, be, you know, so you have violation of trust, you have all kinds of things that happen that disrupt relationships. And then you, me, being on TV, being on the radio, being on stages, being around celebrities. I mean, we ourselves, first of all, Sly said, everybody is a star. So I want to go on the record and say that. I believe that. Recognize your shine. Recognize your shine. However, those of us who are on public platforms, in the public ear and eye, all the time, like you and I are, perception changes. People look at us perhaps a little different and say, oh, Red is different, Didi's not the same, whatever. I know I have relatives who see me and they think, oh my gosh, you're hanging out with Patti LaBelle, you're having Thanksgiving dinner at her house. Girl, I put my pants on one leg at a time. Pants and pants on the same way. Same way, I get hungry like you do, I get sleepy, I get thirsty. So my job, my career, profession, makes me, has me out front. But trust and believe I'm a human being. 
You cut me and cut you, I'm gonna bleed the same way. So let's recognize our commonalities, celebrate our differences as well, but be joyful about what we have in common. You and I are black women. We are, guess what? Struggle is very much the same in this world, in this yeah. time. So now somebody is at my door. Somebody's at your door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry in the middle. Hold on, because my mom ain't gonna get it. Hold on. A I'm sure it was like but, an Amazon delivery. You probably like me. With no, the actually, with. it's a brother who's running for office oh. in my community, and you know I, he's running for state representative. So I, you know, thanked him. Gotta I take that. Took his information. He asked me to read it, and I said I would. That was so you know I what? apologize. You, but you know what? You you I that does not shock me that you would do that. And I'm sh I'm certain you're going to read it. Like to oh, me, you're that kind of person. Like you're like, okay, let me see what this. Okay, you know what? I'm going to yeah. read it, and I'm going to let you know what I think. I think that's so and cool. He's a bishop, the Honorable Bishop Lewis Nash, Democratic County Executive. Now I'm gonna reach back to him. I really am. And I know you're going to have some Anybody questions. Anybody who wants to be of service and service, <laughs> what'd you say, Jasmine? Was? And I know you're going to have some questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you no. You got to do uh, it. You got to do you that. Know, we, have, did, we just elected our first female mayor. She's the 100th mayor of Philadelphia, Sherelle L. Parker. She's a black woman, and I'm so proud of her. And I love that. She has such a big job. So we got to support. We got to support. When you support. know when people who put I themselves out there for public service like that. You got to support them. Got to support that. I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Do you have any guilty pleasures? Because that's what I when when, you, mm -hmm. when the bell rang, I thought Amazon, some kind of shop. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm an online shopper now too. I don't like. I'm a slow shopper. Oh, guilt, guilt. guilt I call them guiltless pleasures. Guiltless pleasures. Yeah, there's nothing. Even though I was raised, I'm not guilty about it. I, I enjoy it. So a lot of my friends, or I don't want to say friends, or some people are surprised when I tell them I watch all the 90 Day Fiancés. Uh, I was watching at a point Married at First Sight because I'm looking at it saying, really? But I'm watching it. I watch several of the Housewives franchises. I watch Married to Medicine because I have friends who say to me, girl, I can't believe that you would sit there for hours and watch that stuff. And I'm like, well, why can't you believe it? I want, I say, mindless American television is what I call it. Mm. I sometimes just need to delve into other people's stuff um, and look at it and have some levity because what it does for me, it's comic relief. Comic Not to relief. say I'm you know, laughing at other people's problems in a way I am, but some of it is incredulous. So I'm like, ooh, boy. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so, I, I, I got to be honest. I... I I don't really watch, well, I got ruined on reality TV a long time ago. It started giving me heart palpitations because I was like, who is, <laughs> who is acting like this? What is happening? <laughs> but what I tell, what I, what I will tell you that I watch is uh, true crime stories. Oh, well, I know. Who, let me tell you something. I'll be in. I'm like, you know what? I know he did it because I saw those shoes and I saw the, the shoe tracks and you know what? I bet he left. Like, I love stuff like that. Or I love watching things about our planet. Me too. Of, I love that. Finding out that there is, you know, a mosquito that they found in ice from, you know, 50 million years ago. And now they can heat it back up and add this chemical. And now it's back to life. Oh, I got to get into stuff like that. I love those kind of shows. Planet Earth, all those shows. I was watching one with Morgan Freeman, of course. Yes, the voice of God, the voice of <laughs> the God. The voice of God, the OG. Um, yeah, so, but no no guilty pleasures, none of that. It's guiltless. I'm living. I'm here for the whole thing. I'm here for, because my favorite show is Finding Your Roots. It's Henry <sighs> Louis Gates. I love that. I love genealogy. I love the study of his, her story, history. I love Sunday mornings. Don't call me Sunday morning because I'm watching. Charles Carrot is what I used well, to watch. Used, yes, used with to be Charles, Charles Carrot. I used to watch yeah, it used to all faithfully. Okay, what? so I watch it now. I love the Saturday edition with Michelle Miller, um, mm -hmm. who's from New Orleans. Well, I, you know, I don't know if she's from New Orleans originally, but her husband was Mark Morial. She was first lady of New Orleans when I lived there. Those are my shows. I love intellectual lift. I, I'm curious about human beings. So those kind of shows, and I'm curious about life on our planet and other planets. This morning when I woke up, I was looking at NASA pictures of space. 
I was looking at stars and planets and the space rockets and all that kind of stuff because I love, I just love I what God has true. done. I, I was going to yeah. say, I, I think, you know, I will tell you something that I have recently, probably in the last six months, I found myself quite curious of trees. Oh. Like I look at them in such wonderment. That's my dog. I look at yeah. them in such wonderment because I think to myself, what have you seen? You've been here for a long time. I can only imagine the births, the deaths, the tragedies, the triumphs, the laughter, the tears, just the many families. And I am in such awe at how much history that they hold. And so now when I see a cluster of trees, I name them because I feel as though they must be families because look how they're leaning towards each other. No, they are families. Be... They're, no, they're families. We don't. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Trees are my favorite too, Jasmine. Uh, we're going to, me look and you, we're going to go on a date. Listen, just yesterday I was talking to a girlfriend. Her name is Shalia Edwards. She called me. We were talking. She was like, we, we were talking. She said, I haven't heard from you or blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, you know, that last time we spoke, you told me no when I said, could we go to the Muir Woods again? She's like, girl, I've been to the Muir Woods so many times with you and other friends. No more Muir Woods. So I was <laughs> speaking to her. I said, I said, you're breaking my heart because these are these are ancient trees. They're ancient. And they oh. live in family groups, Jasmine. Trees live you. in family groups. And you're right. They live and and the and the ancient trees, the sequoias, they've been here for thousands of years. So how can we not look at that tree and say, what have you not seen or know or experienced and you are alive? Trees are alive. They're alive. And these are trees that are hundreds, maybe thousands of years old. So you and I have to make a, a date to go. You. We have to make a day to do that because that to me is part of the wonderment and the amazing things that only God could do. And so now I will even, I'm going to do you one better. Whenever okay. I am feeling just not grounded, not, not secure, and I can't really say it out loud because you know how it is, you build up this facade and you know you pretend you know and you're always giving advice it's like now i can't seem unsteady i will go outside and there's a tree in my backyard and i will just hug it and i will try to center myself and i will say you have been here through thick and thin winds have blown you have bowed but you have not broken and there is something in you that I know I can learn from. Help me to learn to sway when the wind is blowing really hard and I'm losing leaves, but I ain't losing life. And I will hold Ladies. on to that tree, baby. Let me tell you okay. something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> proud tree huggers, me and Jasmine. Proud me and Jasmine, yes. Because guess what? Me and if Deanna. we did not have these trees, we would not have this air that we're breathing. Let's Correct. not forget the purpose, part of the purpose of trees. They it's, give yeah, us air. They, they give, us, give us life. Absolutely. Life. Yo, I'm with you on the trees, girl. What else? Let's, Let me ask you this one. I'm going to ask you one more yeah. question. Yes, ma'am. Now that you, you said you're in fourth quarter, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm 56. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I already know I have. Black don't crack. Mm -hmm. black ankles don't crack. do because of these shoes, but black don't crack. There is more time behind me than in front of me. I am aware of that. And I'm all right with it. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best age of your life? If you could pinpoint a time that you couldn't have made it better, it couldn't have been more blessed in terms of just, it seemed like everything was cosmically aligned. What would you say that era would be? Everything, like you just tingles about it. Incredible question. Incredible. My first instinct was to say right now, right where I am, because here at 70, I can look back at 60, 50, 40 to 20. I can look back at the teen years. I can look back at all of it. And they're all incremental and they all, they're all built on each other. When I was in my 20s, I fell in love with Kenny Gamble. Yeah. I had two of our children. We had three children. That was blissful. I loved being pregnant. I love labor and delivery. Okay. I ain't never heard nobody yeah. say that one. 
<laughs> okay, well, I'm raising my hand. Labor and delivery, you know why? Because I knew at the end of that, I was gonna have this baby that I had loved sight unseen that I was yes. feeding, nurturing, caring for, reading to, singing to, loving up on, and hadn't even laid eyes on them. Oh We're talking my about goodness. Okay. So I love being pregnant and labor <laughs> delivery. I thought I was gonna be a doula at one point because I really oh. was into the whole yeah, I was really into it. So I loved being pregnant. I had my last baby in the eighties, my daughter. I'm so grateful that she's here. So, you know, that period of being in love and saying, looking at another person saying, I wanna have your baby, that was that had so twenties, thirties, that was that. You know, but right now, right now is pretty good. Yeah. Right now is good because I'm more reflective and able to look back and able to look forward and know and say to you, Jasmine, I am now focused on legacy. I'm focused on whatever I do. I want it to count. I want it to make a difference. I want it to inspire and motivate someone else to live their lives fully. My youngest son, Saladin, Issa Saladin Gamble died two years ago. We're coming up May 10th on the anniversary of my son's transition. You know what his death did for me? It made me more present in life. It made me, and I made a commitment to my son. I said, I am going to live life more fully and present than I did prior to this day that I learned that you we're not here physically anymore. Wow. My child is with me. You know, he's on my watch. Look at, I'm looking at my watch. There I am on a horse. There, can see I, I can see. Okay. Can you see it? I'm up there I'm on the carousel, but he pops up on my watch all day long. And I'm like, hey, ease. So right now, this is a great time. This is a great time because I'm in love. I have an incredible person in my life that just, when I say if I could bottle him and disperse him to people who don't have somebody, man, I'd be doing a public service. Okay, well, how about <laughs> I disperse some of it over here? I'm, I'm gonna take some of his hair, put it in a jar and send it to you. And if you can genetically reproduce him, good luck, sis. Good luck. <laughs> because you will be so loved and you will be so attended to. My mom is still here. She may not know what day and date and year this is, but she knows me still. And that's a blessing that's a to have blessing. an outside parent. So, that you know, I get to wash, I get to, sh I get to wash my mother. I put her in my shower and wash her back and her legs and wash her hair. She did all of that for me. And then some, when I couldn't do it. Mm. So the privilege of living long enough to be able to care for this woman who cared for her parents and her, she buried two husbands, three brothers, her best friend. What an honor. What and to still have a voice in our culture where I'm encouraging people to celebrate, it's, it's American culture made by black people. It is I will do day. that fast, until I can't breathe anymore. The National Museum of African American Music, Nashville, your hometown, Fifth and Broadway, I encourage people to go. I'm on the board there. I'm one of the board members that opened the museum three years ago. Please go recognize that music and specifically black music is a universal language overstood by billions, not millions. Mm -hmm. And it's felt by billions as long as we've been making music. That is my mission as a human being, as a Latina black woman, African woman on this planet is to spread joy through the universal language of our music and our culture. I can't think of a better legacy. I, I can't. I can't think of a better legacy and I can't think of a better person to do it. I'm so, so glad that God has put that on you and on your shoulders. It's not always easy, but know that you are surrounded by love. You are surrounded by people who support you. I supported you when I didn't even know you and I had never even laid eyes on you. And I don't know if you remember, but when we were in that hall and I saw you, I was like, oh my God, look who it is. I was. I told Felicia Love how much I love you. Felicia Love uh, is the sister who founded Women, yes. Black Women's Radio, who brought us all together, took us to the White House last year. It was a poor down rainy day. But when I say there was so much firepower in that room and we're talking about women who have been doing it before me. Yes. And then some of the younger women. And then we have Patty Jackson, who's been on the same radio station in the same time slot. So yes. Her entire career. Isn't that amazing? Who does that? 
Who gets to do that? Patty Jack. Yeah. Multiple owners. But the fact that Felicia had the insight, the fortitude to bring us together, to be able to celebrate our collective archives, our her stories, where we have shared and given to our communities throughout the world. And now with streaming, Jasmine, pe there, there are people listening to you in Africa. There are people listening to you in China. There are people listening to you in the Caribbean, New Zealand, all over the world. You have a voice of importance and what you do on the daily. And you know what? Even if you were to leave there today, I'm sure you would go someplace else and still do elevation. That's what you are engaged in. So when we get tired, when we get sad, when when we feel lonely or whatever, I'm going to need you to know that I am here for you. And even with everything that's going on in life, we, we, we want people to know you are not alone. So when you are going through it, we go through it too. Yes, we are light. Yes, we are bright. Yes, we, we give a lot of energy. But at the end of the day, we get tired too. We get tired. But I know how to speak up. The closed mouth does not get fed. Amen. And I'm sister. Gonna, at the beginning of this conversation, I was having all kind of chest pains because I was feeling tension and anxiety. I need you to know it is dissipated because of this exchange. I feel so much better. And I'm gonna do what my friends have encouraged me to do, which Thank is to take a break and to simmer down from the trauma and the drama of people very close to me who are very, very ill. And it has me very, very concerned. Well, but I'm gonna take care of myself because what happens, I go down, what That's about right. my mama? And I will say I'm not, this, I'm not going I, am, I am there with you in spirit. Um, whenever you need uh, an extra boost, just know that I am praying for you. I am praying that God continue to keep you, to cover you, and to strengthen you when you feel like your cup is empty. And regarding your friends, know that God is still on the throne and he is still in control. And he will... His, his will is perfect. It, it may not make sense to us all the time, but I, I think that he, he will give us what we need to carry through. And it's just a matter of trust. And I think it's easy to say that you trust when you are not faced with something that seems untrustworthy. It's so and true. So I, I want you to know that I am, I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to cross paths with you. I never thought that I would, not this little, you know, small town girl from Ottawa, Tennessee, who just had big dreams, but to be at the White House amongst all of those amazing women and to have one of them be you. Because I went and it was under cloak and dagger. I didn't know who all was going to be there. And I made a beeline to everyone that I had watched. And when I saw you, it just... And I, I tried to get, I tried to talk to you last year. I was like, if I could just talk to Deanna, everything would be great. But your schedule, and I get it. I, I'm just happy to be in the Oh, number. girl, let me tell you, I I'm felt so bad last number. year when I had to <laughs> cancel because I have so much regard for you. I told, I, today, even today, my family, my folks were like, clear your schedule, do nothing. Do nothing, go do something that you enjoy doing. And I was like, I'm about to do it. It's called My Conversation, Woman to Woman with Jasmine. I'm oh. doing it. And this has been my gift today. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. You. Now you go take a break, disconnect, unplug, and just plug into you, get you them books you love to read so much, you know. And uh, I'm going to try to remember that that word. Uh, uh, oh, too mucking fudge. Too mucking fudge. I got that. Use, use that on DL and see I'm going to use it and a whole lot more. <laughs> and in a other situations, too much and fudge. When it gets too much and fudge, we just got to woo Every day. Take Indeed. it down and enjoy Deanna, life fully. Thank, thank you, you so much. What a pleasure. What a light. I love you dearly. If you ever need me for anything, I don't care what it is, you know I'm just a phone call away. It really just a whisper. All right, lady. I'm hope no. I want to hug a tree with you. I want to I want to go see that. the big trees with you. I, we I've can never work seen them. We got to do that. Oh, oh, oh I want to see them. The Muir Woods are 11 miles outside of downtown San Francisco. It ain't nothing but We're going to make that happen. We're, I promise you. That's what I want to do. Awesome. Okay, so, so Shalia doesn't want to go with me anymore. <laughs> okay, Shalia, I'm guess what? I'm taking Shalia, your spot. <laughs> Shalia, your spot has been taken. Duh. Okay. Bye, girl. <laughs>
Bye, girl. Thank you, Deanna. Have a great one. You're so welcome. And you do the same. Peace. Bye-bye.